Today we're looking at the i5 13500's box cooler. Now, I thought I'd make a video and it'd be like, okay guys, go get an aftermarket cooling solution because the 13th gen box cooler is just as bad as the 12th gen box cooler. And if you guys didn't know, I did a video on the 12th gen box cooler where it just really wasn't good at all. But Intel, even though the cooler looks the same, it has a different fan. And this shows when we weigh up the two coolers, they're actually slightly different in weight. But this new cooler, I'm guessing I'm calling it new with quotation marks there, this new cooler does a better job of not just cooling, but also keeping noises down a little bit, as well as one really important fact, and that is that when it changes between different PWM states, that is when the temperatures get hotter and the motherboard sends out a stronger voltage signal to raise the fan speeds, that transition between those lower noise states to higher noise states isn't as noticeable. In other words, it's not going to go whoop, 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 like some musical opera thing. It's going to go whoop. And that's just for me, my ears personally, it's a big improvement. It was actually one of the biggest reasons why when I thought about it, I didn't like the 12th gen box cooler, but Intel has improved it to the point where today we're going to be doing a showdown with this box cooler and some other budget options from AliExpress where we recently took a look at a heap of different budget coolers for around $20, $25 and $30. And the results are in this video actually kind of good for the Intel box cooler, but there's also some other coolers. If you're thinking about spending a little bit extra, then you may wish to take a look at. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and the i5-13500 phenomenal cpu we just finished doing a review on this cpu here at tech Air city and i'm describing it as the jack of all trades master of value that's the simple way to describe this cpu is hitting so hard for the dollar it's giving you pretty much an intro into the world of everything as a single end desktop user you want good gaming performance you want good productivity scores you want good well, reasonably good efficiency this cpu is going to give you all of those plus the added on benefit of you can couple it in with a budget B760 or even an H610 if you can get one with the updated BIOS and a cheap box cooler now and cheap DDR4 memory, you get yourself one of the best value, not just CPUs, but combos in town. However, let's get on to the results of this box cooler. First of all, we're testing out Cinebench R23. And now we tested this out with a B760 Steel Legend motherboard and what we saw here with the 13th gen box cooler versus the 12th gen is that we're going up to 84 degrees versus 87 degrees. And not just that, we're shaving off three decibels of noise while we're doing this. Now in these graphs, I've also included three other aftermarket cooling solutions. My favorite being the Snowman MT4, low noise, great value, and 62 degrees. So you're still shaving off 22 degrees in Cinebench R23 with these numbers. Now, also when it comes to gaming, we'll throw up the first game here, Returnal, which is a bit of a lightweight game in terms of its CPU draw. Now, here's where we scored with the Intel box cooler, 64 degrees maximum, and this is in a 20 degree C ambient environment, by the way, I put that in the graphs, but it's averaged 58 degrees. Of course, the other aftermarket cooling solutions did do a phenomenal job here. The Snowman scoring the victory, and then moving over to the next game, Horizon Zero Dawn, this is where we scored maximum of 70 degrees on the 13th gen box cooler, where the uh, 12th gen box cooler did an inferior job of cooling. And as we noted in the intro, when the fan ramps up between different PWM states, it's much more noticeable on the 12th gen box cooler. But to give you guys a difference between the noise, I've included a quick clip on the maximum noise states on both the 12th gen and the 13th gen box cooler. So let's take a quick listen. So now what we're seeing with the Intel 13th gen box cooler is that simply if you are on a strict budget and you wanna get this CPU say over a 
i5 12400, a last gen, 12th gen, or you want to say, think about getting a Ryzen 7 5700X, and you're like, well, do I need to go spend extra on a cooler? The good news is you don't have to go out and spend extra on a cooler. This box cooler will do the job and it will do the job without being too annoying. So it's good to see that Intel have improved this box cooler though. If you do want some aftermarket solutions, in a previous video, I did roast this uh, iGo cooler pretty hard, but in this video, it did surprise me in that it came out with some decent results. However, iGo did say that it supports up to 160 watts TDP, which is a lie. And also the mounting issues and the three pin fan header make it so that I still wouldn't recommend it. Now, the last figure that we're going to look at here is the wattage difference between the box cooler and the Snowman MT4. Here is where the i5-13500 out of the box will run up to around 123 watts. It's a weird figure, but if you do have the box cooler, what will happen is it'll run at 4.4 gigahertz. Though if you put on something like a Snowman MT4, the CPU will go up to 4.5 gigahertz all cores. So as opposed to the previous generation when we tested 12th gen, it stayed at a certain clock speed and just used up higher wattage. So basically, the lower the temperatures are on your CPU, it's going to run slightly more efficient. And that's a, still the same scenario for the i5-13500 in that if you get a better cooler, it's going to be better for long-term usage. But this time around, Intel's kind of masked the difference by just upping the speeds when you get a better cooler by 100 megahertz. And with all those numbers out of the way, it's conclusion time. And here is where the Intel 13th gen box cooler, it's improved over the 12th gen. And you can, I guess, reliably use it if you're on a strict budget and you want to say push it up to the i5-13500 over say the i5-13400 uh, and also other variants in the range. And so if you want to skimp on that cooler, the box cooler will do an okay job. Though me personally, I would still go out and get a Snowman MT4. The difference in noise and temperatures as seen in this video is quite substantial. Though that being said, the Intel 13th gen box cooler does have an extremely low profile. It is quite a small cooler. So that is one advantage going for it. And it also looks a lot better than their 11th gen and before box coolers. Anyway, guys, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comments section below what you think of the 13th gen box cooler versus the 12th. I know they look exactly the same, but there is that subtle difference, though in the real world, it can make a huge difference. Though with that aside, we've got the question of the day here, which comes from user HJ9OS6BC3T, and they ask, did I make a mistake of getting a Ryzen 5 5600 instead of this? And they're referring to the... Ryzen 7 5700X just for pure gaming. And to answer that question, I would say no, because you're asking the question, you don't need the extra performance. Really when it comes down to it, the Ryzen 5 5600 is an extremely good value for money budget gaming CPU, especially coupled in with a lot of the better value GPUs like your RX 6700 XT, RTX 3060 Ti. So for pure gaming, I would say you made a great choice there. Anyhow, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button and ring the bell on your way out. You'll get the videos as soon as they drop here. And with all that aside, peace out for now. Bye.